Um, hi, uh, my name is Jasper Ford and we're driving into Hereford. Uh, now Hereford is interesting for a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, it was the home of Sir Thomas Elgar, the composer. It's where the band The Pretenders come from, but most famously it is the birthplace of Frank Oz, who we know better of course as Miss Piggy, Yoda and one half of the Swedish chef. Hereford has also got a honkingly good cathedral, a livestock market, adequate parking, theatre, cinema, museum, an interesting pedestrian underpass and its very own TK Maxx. But we're not here to see the Hereford that is, but the Hereford that could be. And look at some of the settings that inspired the mythical world of Jennifer Strange and the Last Dragon Slayer. In this world, which is set in the modern day, houses of enchantment supply sorcerers for cash, or they used to. The power of magic has faded and there are only two companies left. iMagic over in Stroud and Kazam here in Hereford, run by Jennifer Strange. But Jenny can't actually do magic, she manages it. And because most sorcerers are as mad as a sack of doorknobs, her job is anything but easy. This house is known controversially as the old house. Uh, we're not sure why this is, but leading historians suggest it's because it's old and a house. Kazam is home to 45 sorcerers, some active, some retired, all mad. The building behind me is the model for Zambini Towers, the hotel in which they all live. Elegant, ornate, but in my book, 12 stories high. It's actually the council offices where they do really cool things like figure out sort of procurement procedures for rubbish collection, stuff like that. The cathedral plays host to many fine Thomas Elgar musical evenings, who, while better known for his pastoral compositions, still found time to design the spokeless bicycle. When magic faded, so too did the importance of magicians. Once, mighty sorcerers commanded the winds and were sought by emperors and royalty. Now, they make a living unblocking drains, rewiring houses. But that all might change, because there's a big magic in the air. A chance to rekindle the power of magic, or lose it completely. So, where do dragons come into the book? Well, Kazam's resident clairvoyant has foreseen the death of the last dragon who lives here in the Dragonlands, surrounded by a force field. But as soon as the dragon dies, so too does the force field. And what that means is there's 300 square miles of prime real estate ready to be claimed. So anybody with a set of running shoes, string and some stakes can be very rich indeed. And this is Snod Hill Castle. It really is called that. That's why I named King Snod, King Snod. And you thought I made all of this up. Now, of course, Jennifer is appalled that everyone wants the dragon to die, so they then grab some real estate and some cash. But crucially, she knows that because of the dragon pact, if there is a last dragon, there has to be a last dragon slayer. So she sets out to find him. And that's when the adventure really begins. Well, that's about the end of our tour. Uh, I hope it's been fun. I hope you feel compelled to visit Hereford and, of course, read The Last Dragon Slayer. Jennifer is appalled that everybody really begins. Looked away twice. Now, Jennifer is appalled, of course, that uh, everyone that everyone wants the dragon to die so but crucially she knows that because of the dragon now of course for every last dragon there has to be uh, for every last dragon